Here, Jim. That Tony hasn't been up here for a couple of days. Yeah, he's probably using that excuse that it's too hot up here. Not like us. we got to stay up here 24-7. We've got no choice in the matter. Shh, quiet. I think that's him coming up the stairs now. Keep still. Oh, right, this is where I left the camera. Right, let's set it up. Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And I hope you're keeping safe and well, especially in the mini heat wave that we've been having over the past week. But uh, it's not too bad up here today. I've got the window open, and um, yeah, the air is a little bit more breathable. So, this week, what are we going to concentrate on? Well, the retaining walls. I want to do this section all the way through to the back of the station platform there, all the way around, past those two herbits on the end of the platform, and right away around to the bridge over there. So if I can get that done this week, that will then stand us in good stead for when we come to build the station. Because as you can see here, I've left a little bit of gap here. Um, it's only about 5 mil, so it should be enough for the card for the actual station building and the card that's going to go up against this wall. So the plan is, there's always a plan. Somehow I've got to marry this wall with this stone wall. So when you look at it from this view, you only see this wall. And when you look at it from this section, you only see the retaining wall on this side. But in some cases where we've got this undulations in the ground level, we might not be able to do that. We might be able to see a little bit of the stone wall but I'd still like to keep uh, this separate from Stevenson's Bank. But uh, we shall see how we get on with that. So, I have screwed a piece of 10mm timber to, to this um, Stevenson's Bank here. Hopefully that will bring out an edge so I can infill it with greenery, brush, that sort of thing. So it does separate the two areas that's that's the, the idea and uh, hopefully we'll follow that plan of the wall right way along this edge and hopefully just about here the wall should drop down a little bit because it's a different height from here to over there because of the slope of Stevenson's bank but uh, we shall see as we move along so Let's make a start. Here we are, back at the bench, and um, I'm going to make the retaining walls using this recycled card. Uh, so yeah, this has came off an old laptop, and it's a good quality card. It's a couple of millimeters thick, and that'll give us a good solid wall, I think. And uh, what I'm going to be using to cover that up is this. Metcalf sheet. It's M050. Now you can't buy this anymore. Um, the stop Metcalf stopped producing this uh, a couple of years ago, but I just happened to have well half a packet left, which matches the stone that's on the embankment anyway. And uh, this is what they brought out now. There's not a lot of difference. It's just a lighter tone of brick. So if I go from there. To there you can see a subtle difference I prefer this one because the grain is deeper and this one it's it's a lot lighter so yep yeah, so I shall use the last of this M050 uh, which will blend in with what's already there so the wall is progressing quite well, uh, which you'll see in the minutes. What I'm doing here, I'm just making up some pillars. These are 18mm wide, and I'm just covering them up with the M050 uh, um, 
stone sheet. So what I'm doing here, I'm just coming in roughly about one and a half mil. It's about there, I think. I'm using the back of the scalpel, just imprinting it. Now this will um, give us the fold to go around the, the card. So that's what I'm doing here, so I'll just do that. Roughly about one and a half mil. The strips of this um, stone sheet is 21 millimeters wide. Or 21.5. Let me just roll that over. Just to get a start, and then once you get the card in there, you can fold it over a lot better. Now the height of the wall is um, 87 millimeters wide, so this is just uh, right. So if it's not going to fit properly, just take a little bit more off the edge. I think where this card is very spongy you just can't get an accurate cut. Just taking a fraction off. That's better. So you just want to cover the edge of the card. Right, so these will be ready to glue together. And uh, we'll go and show you what the wall looks like. So this is what we've done so far. Um, the wall almost reaches the station. Uh, from this point here, at this end, we're about um, 80 millimeters away from the station front. So all I'm doing now is just PVA in the extra supports for the wall. Just gonna stick one there. Just gonna make sure it's square. Now you probably notice that the wall bends in and then comes out again. So that's to allow for the bush shelter which is going to sit just about just in here, in this area here. So, what's that one? Just got to wipe off the, the excess glue. So that's one down. And we've got one here already, at the, right at the far end of the wall. And what we'll do, we'll put two more in, there and there, at equal spaces between these two points here, which works out at about 120 millimeters center. And we'll just glue the next one in there. And once they're all glued, these edges will be trimmed back because uh, they're a little bit proud at the moment. They'll be trimmed back because we've got to put some um, capping on these walls as well. Moving on a bit with the extra supports going in, you can see how the wall is taking shape. So I've just gone past the station uh, building edge here a little bit uh, about a hundred and uh, twenty mil but I will continue the stone fascia on there but I won't pack it out like I have been so all I'm doing now is just adding these strips of Metcalf slates in there because this is a common feature on the layout so I might as well continue with the tradition now that we've all heard of the Great Wall of China 
this could end up being the Great Wall of Jarrah. So that's just going to sit on there like that. Exactly 69 millimeters from the ground. Well, I couldn't resist the chance of putting up the 1950s advertising posters. Now these are from Kingsway. They're only about $2.99 a pack. You get two pages. And, uh, So it's Kingsway, it's 1950s advertising posters. This is uh, page two, and uh, this here is page one. Now the good thing about Kingsway uh, models is that if you go on their freebie um, downloads, you can download um, wallpapers, yeah, brick walls, uh, all sorts but yeah so that's where I bought these from Kingsway models and um, it just sets the scene yep I did get carried away I should really concentrate on getting all the walls done but um, I just couldn't resist that today is Sunday and um, I had received this with my coffee this morning, which is uh, from Rails of Sheffield, I believe. And um, yeah, quite a nice little addition. It will be added to my rake of planked cold wagons. So, yeah. Thought just to quickly show you that before I start on the midsection, because so I've done the wall that end, and uh, I need to continue all the way up through here to about this point here where the walls line up with this wall. So let's get cracking. Got a lot to do. First of all, I've got to move these figures are in the way, and uh, that tree's got to come out. So what I'll do is I'll take that tree out and probably pop it that side, because obviously when the the building goes up, because there'd be uh, a long wall for the station. So when that goes up, this tree will probably be in the way. So we'll just move that temporarily. It'll go back um, on the other side of the wall. So I've got a hole to fill in there. So what I'll do is I'll just get a bit of sandpaper, take this rough edge off, and glue the card straight onto this, because I want to leave the gap down in the platform for the, the station when I come to build it. So with the centre section all I've done is just follow the profile of the edge of the uh, baseboard, the original baseboard as it was, and that uh, seems to have finished that off quite well. I'm not going to um, add any extra pillars or anything along that edge because um, you're not going to see it. Uh, I think once the station walls are in uh, with the small can be um, yeah you won't see it but uh, you might do it I don't I don't know I um, haven't come across um, designing that as yet and uh, I've capped it off with this pillar right at the end of the wall this is where a different stone will come into effect and uh, this is where it gets interesting 
because we have a profile here and here and they've got to come down to meet the new wall so yeah this is where it's going to get interesting but I want to keep the height of the wall at one particular height all the way through except for this piece here where it comes up to the start of the new wall um, and then there'll be a pillar there and then we'll, the wall will slowly come away as you can see here where I've drawn it onto the baseboard but I'm not sure whether we'll have a right angle or just come across at an angle so that the guys in the signal box can see what's coming uh, along the track so that is the plan so, and this is the actual height of what the wall is going to be 75 millimeters but we need at least a 20 mil or an 18 mil drop on the other side so I'm going to have to card that side out first before gluing this in place so it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how I do this final section. So it's going to look something like that. So that's where I'm going to stick it to the original baseboard edge. And I'm going to have a slope and that's going to follow the track round at least 30 millimeters away from the rails. Um, obviously it's going to need some support because it's quite flexible. So I'm putting some tabs on the back which I'm using Yoo-Hoo glue, so I'm going to have to let them dry or let the glue dry before sticking it down. Just making sure these tabs are really forced home and then flush to the edge. And we'll just have to wait for the glue to go off. And one more. And then it'll be done. Got four tabs along there. Obviously there'll be a, a tab going on here, a long one, which will be glued to there, which will keep this corner vertically upright. Well, the thing is, I'm going to have to take away some of the... Yes, I'm going to have to remove that ballast egg, just see the pencil line, so I'm going to have to take that ballast away and uh, yeah, so it's starting to take shape now that this piece of card is glued in I'm just putting this in just temporarily just to see how this looks we have a notch here, we're going to have a small bridge coming across here just wide enough for a tractor to go um, to go across it um, to reach the other side. Uh, I've also scraped back the um, greenery, if you like, so that uh, when I come to paper mash it across, we're going to open up this so it'll be well a little bit of a bigger field, uh, I guess. And then we just got to obviously marry the slope in uh, as we go yep I've been pulling trees out as you can see so yeah I'm not sure about the slope starting there I might cut that back I think maybe start the slope from there on this wall to that point yeah I might cut that back yeah, so the bridge is more or less in line with this high point here because it's the highest point as it comes back up so it's less, a little bit less work there hopefully and then it just slopes away again yep so that's so far so good um, as you can see I've put some tie-ins from the old and the new 
probably put a couple of more in as well um, as we go along. We're now moving along quite nicely and you can see the different tones in the card. Um, I think I said earlier that this was the original print of Medcalf card and in 2015 they ditched that and then they brought this out uh, which is slightly lighter and I prefer this dark because most of um, the layout has this dark Anyway, so we're moving on a little bit and then I had a little bit of a brainwave. I thought, well, this area is going to be quite narrow because we're going to have a wall on this side. I just placed this card here so you can see how narrow that is going to be. So I thought to myself, right, we're going to have a little cutaway here. So poor guys. Like this little fella, if a train comes along, you can duck out the way. I'm not sure what they call these, maybe you can help us out in the comments. Some sort of um, hideaway or safety way or whatever you call it. Anyway, if you want to know the size I've cut it at, it's 13mm by 28mm. Basically, I just wrote, drew around this guy and used him as a guinea pig. So what I'll do now is I'll glue this piece of card to the back of that card, and that's in there, like so. There's a little bit of a clearance there, so if a train does come along, you can duck in there. Now you don't often see that modelled on railways when you get the nice mid calf uh, abutment walls, but you never see those. So I'll put one there, and uh, when I put the wall up this side, I'll put another one in as well. So that's where we are at the moment. Hopefully, we'll get this finished. Right, so that finishes off the wall on that side for your Jarrah Road. Um, if you look closely, there's a pencil line on the baseboard to the left, and that's where the other um, retaining wall is going to go, and that should be in line with the platform. So it's going to be quite a narrow spot uh, along the way, as we said earlier on in the video. And now, uh, Matey Boy has got somewhere to duck out of the way if a train ever comes along. Well, the tracks have been cleaned, so hopefully next time we'll, I'll have a train running along the track. Um, other things to look forward to is to build in the hillside, bring it along from this edge to the underside of that wall. But uh, that's for another time. Hopefully another video. So... I think we should leave it there for this week. Stay safe everybody. And enjoy your model railways. Bye for now. Bye. Use me as a flipping guinea pig, eh? Cool, I wish I was five foot two. I'll tell him what for.